Hi, welcome guys. So today we're going to look at a room on Trihackme called Bolts, a hero is unleashed. Okay, so the very first part tells me to deploy the machine, it's already deployed. And it kind of tells me that there is something called Bolt CMS. So what I usually would like to do when I see this is just to go to Google and, and type in like uh, Bolt CMS as it told me to. And uh, what I'm seeing is that you have a bold CMS system here. Whenever I hear CMS, I hear backend login, I hear brute force, I hear passwords, I hear many different things in my head. So what I'm just going to do off the bat is just go right bold CMS admin login because I'm pretty sure no matter what this room is, I'm going to get access to the in some way to the admin login. And <clears throat> what it tells me is to go to the login page at your domain slash bold. So whatever domain I have, it's going to be slash bold, and then I'm going to access the actual admin login page. It's very crucial information to know about the CMS system, how to log in uh, as, uh, as an admin, or just via the, the, the actual login admin panel. What I'm going to start off with is just to copy the IP address right here. I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see, not that page. Going to take a new console. I'm going to run nmap on scan for open ports. So I'm going to say, I want, to, I want to see which kind of versions there is. And this is going to be the IP address we scan for. I will have only the most used ports in my scan. So while that's scanning, I'm going to go to the web, to my web page and just browse the actual IP address that I, I got. The actual IP address shows me an Apache Ubuntu default page with kind of tells me that this is not Bolt CMS. Well, right now I'm thinking, what if it's on another port? And I'm pretty sure that this CMS system is running on another port. So what about our in-map scan? Is that finished? Uh, where was it? I just can't find it. Segmentation fault. Alrighty then. Uh, let's see, uh, looks like the right IP address, it does, let's just run it again. So that might be an error. It does happen sometimes with nmap, whenever that happens, just rerun it, type in the same thing and hopefully it doesn't get a segmentation fault again. Segmentation faults is something that happens inside the core of the program, if it fails to uh, some memory management in some part or access to some on uh, on uh, well should not get access to certain parts of memory all right so what I get here is a very good scan let's see it tells me that it's very good latency out of the th uh, first thousand ports the three ports are open here port 22 it's an open SSH just just off the bat, usually I would go and enumerate this service and see if I can find any users and try and uh, get a SSH access and brute force my access through it. However, on this occasion, the whole room talks about the Bolt CMS system. So what I'm really thinking is, I wonder if it's running on port 8000 because it's kind of open and it's running on HTTP server and it's something with PHP. Let's go back to the browser again and let's go back to the Bolt uh, CMS system and pretty fast let's find out if Bolt CMS is written with PHP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google and write Bolt CMS and just take my chances and write PHP. Now let's see, the reason why Twig blah 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 de facto across PHP community uh, Bolt is free open source content management system based on PHP. I'm pretty sure that Bolt CMS is built with P the PHP language. So what I'm pretty sure about also is that the port 8000 is our web server and the target web server for Bolt CMS. So I'm going to go to my to my web page, uh, put the IP address in, port 8000, and what I'm seeing here is my Bolt CMS. Uh, standard installation and what I kind of want to do right now is I know that if I go right slash build I'm accessing the, the login so right now I know there is a login so what should I do now I should go and find myself a pair of credentials 
Now, I, I know from prior knowledge on Frihackme that there is probably a good chance that the credentials is uh, exposed on the web page. So I'm just going to scroll down here and see, it seems to know constant in the database, it's a really raw installation. Latest message for the IT department, hey guys, I suppose, blah, 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 let's see. My password is bold admin123. Okay, so it seems like that Jake, which is an admin, have a user with a password called bold admin123. I'm going to scroll further down, message from admin, that's a cute doc, right? And it says Jake and my username is bold. All right, so usually, okay, usually this is not something that should be found on a web page. So if I couldn't find the credentials on a web page, I would brute force my way through it, or I would even try to enumerate or look for posts and so on and so on. Different posts might expose the actual username. And it does right here in the bottom, it says written by bold. So I would probably take note of that and try to brute force my way, in, my way in. However, right now I do have my credentials and I could try and go to the actual uh, bold admin webpage login and put in the credentials of bold and bold admin123, press enter and say no to save the password. And there we go, you have access to the backend. All right, so. I could probably look at the file management part here and upload the files. I'm thinking malicious file up upload. Uh, I'm thinking uploading a PHP file. But what I'm what I'm kind of what I kind of want to do right now is before I start lurking around, looking for different kind of vulnerabilities, why not take a visit to a trusted page called ExploitDB? ExploitDB is a very good page that can help us with the newest and the most interesting. Uh, exploits and already at some some way I already typed in bold TMS in the search bar and what we can see here is that there is an actual exploit the newest one from 2020 um, called bold TMS version 3.7.0 authenticated remote code execution but let's blend it because we are authenticated we do have our user credentials and remote code execution, that's perfect. So what I'm thinking is, do I need to try any of the other exploits listed here? And it seems like this only one from 3.7 that is of exploit for, and the rest is, well, looks outdated. So I'm just gonna go to my dashboard in the bold CMS and see if I can see some versions somewhere. Let's see in the bottom. Oh yeah, there we go. It says version 3.7.1. So I am 0 0.0.1 off inversion from 3.7.0. I think this is gonna work. What I'm gonna do right now is go to my trusty Metasploit. I'm gonna boot up Metasploit. And there are many different ways you can go around uh, trying to do this. What I'm gonna try is just to say, well, what about if I write search bold and search with different exploits in the Metasploit database? I'm getting two different exploits which is ranking as excellent well that is excellent right and it says cms build file of load of vulnerability from 15 well that might be but there's a newer one here and it's it's the same one authenticated remote code execution it's short for rce remote code execution and it says the same version this is the exploit number zero and the last one exploit number one so in Metis probably we can just write use one. And I'm using the the actual <coughs> uh, name here of the um, of the exploit, and the payload is a reverse netcat. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is gonna give me an access to the server so that I can do some sort of remote code execution. Probably even get a shell in the box. So let's go ahead and write show options and see what kind of options this exploit needs me to give it to for it to work. So it says authenticated. Basically, I'm thinking I need the password, I need the username, I need to tell where the the IP well, I need to tell the, the exploit the IP address of the server I need to exploit. The remote port is the same. Luckily for us, it's also 8000. Else you would have to change it. It could be on the nmap scan here. Now, if this wasn't 8,000, but let's say 9,000, 
then you would have to go around and change the set port for to 9000. However, right now it's the same. And I think, no, I also need to put in my localhost IP address. So what I'm gonna do is set localhost, and I think I have it open right here. It's 10, 11, zero, 201. Put that in, I'm gonna paste in username, bold, and set password, bold admin123. And what I'm also gonna set is remote hosts. How did I spell that? Uh, R hosts or Edison. So that's the, the actual IP address of the server. I'm gonna right click and copy, and paste that in. All right, let's see. Localhost, username, password, and our host. It seems that I'm ready to write exploit or you can write run, and that's the same thing. So I'm gonna run the exploit, and basically it tells me that it started a TCP handler, and on the port that I supplied, and kind of found four potential tokens for creating PHP files, all right, that's really good. What I'm looking for is, that is what I'm looking for. Command shell session one open. So I have a shell in the box and, okay, so it hangs down here. What I'm usually gonna do is just, who am I? And what I'm seeing is I'm root. <laughs> that is really good. So what I'm gonna do is say ls to look at the content. And what I see is the index file. So I'm gonna go one back and look again the contents. Looks really good and go one back again and all right so we are getting different kind of files what I want to do is I look for something called flag.txt so now right here we have our first flag I'm pretty sure that it kind of wants me to go into the root directory as well and uh, is it empty looks really empty to me Uh, is there a flag somewhere? Let me just see what it kind of wants me to do. Already put all things in. Yeah, already. I already found the flag and already answered all the questions. So let's go quickly go through the room. What I kind of did is that I, I scanned the machine with Nmap, found that the different kind of ports were open and 8000 were the one that's interesting for us. The username and the password were exposed on the web page, and the version of the CMS system was 3.7.1. And the exploit had exploit ID as 48,296, which is the the number that I can find if I click the actual authenticated remote execution exploit on the exploit DB web page. I can see that the number of the EDB exploit DB ID is 48,296 which is exactly the same number that is right here. And the Mazeboard recently added the exploit for the module for this vulnerability. This exploit here is the one that I chose in Metasploit. When, let me see if we can scroll up a bit. Right here, when we pressed one exploit Unix web app and both authenticated RCE, which is exactly the one that is Exploit Unix Web App Bold Authenticated RCE. So that's gonna be the exploit uh, text you're gonna copy paste in here. And no needed, okay, right. And the flag is basically just a text file proven that you got access to the correct library and proven that you got access with the root user. In this case, we have access with root. So there's nothing much more to do. We are root on the box we owned it and basically what i would do right now is just exit and well that's it so for this room guys we exploited a vulnerable application called boat cms and if we're going to look at this from the os perspective and just go up and and os.org and look at the different kind of top 10 here. Yeah. So what kind of things were an issue with the Bolt CMS? Okay, so it's gonna be difficult for us to tell without looking at the actual exploit. Now, I know what the exploit does, and it kinda doesn't do any kinda, well, 
It doesn't do any SQL injection or stuff like that. There. there is no broken authentication. There is sensitive data exposure because uh, the exploit actually does look at uh, sessions and exposure to sessions. Uh, the broken access control part is also broken because there are different things on the boat CMS that is exposed to the open eye. Security misconfiguration, you could say that in a certain part. And I would say that you got using components with normal abilities. Well, in a certain way, because components is a part of Bolt CMS and it kind of lacked some um, security uh, upgrades to be less vulnerable or to be not vulnerable at all. So looking at this from an OS perspective, the Bolt CMS application of the version 3.7 the old version is really bad and should never be used or installed on any web page. If you're going to use Bolt CMS and you might not do that after seeing all this. However, I think it's pretty safe to say that they are not in 3.7 anymore. The current stable and this is kind of frightening in a way because I know how many different things there is needed for this application to work properly. Uh, it's only version 4.0 at the moment. However, I think it should be quite safe to use the new version, which is stable. Always make sure to go at the exploit DB to look for different kind of exploits. Also go and look for, let's say, Bolt CMS for and the right exploits. And then you can go and look around and see, well, did they find anything for the newer version of Bolt and so on and so on. And if there is nothing going on and you really want to use this room, I suggest that you ask on different uh, forums, maybe even Stack Exchange or maybe even the Discord channel on for HackMe to see if there's any known exploit for Bolt CMS. So I hope you liked this video about the Bolt CMS The Hero is Unleashed, the way that I talked about it, going in depth with different kind of things, the exploit talking about a bit more than just the exploit. So if you like this explanation of Bolt CMS, please comment, please subscribe, and please click the bell for future notifications. And do remember that on my channel, Security in Mind, I have a big variety of videos about secure progra programming, a full walkthrough of OS top 10 explained with examples. And I'm also gonna do ethical hacking like this and try hack me and various other technologies like full Python courses and so on. I'm going to see you again online. Bye bye.